So let's say you're interested in doing sound input on your dot two. There's a three pin XLR port on the back. And first of all, you have to set the volume level for that incoming signal. Obviously you have a volume control on your sound mixer or your computer or your iPhone or whatever, but you also have to set the incoming uh, level by the tools menu. So you go to tools, you go to sound input and you'll see, I actually have a microphone set up in my system here. There is no microphone in the dot two. I just happen to have a microphone set up through my system here and you're going to be able to control the volume here. As audio is coming in you're going to see this waveform bounce. So if I play music you see that uh, that sound form is bouncing to the music as well. So that's how you're going to verify that you have audio coming in and now what we're going to do is we're going to play music and this BPM is going to automatically calculate, but it is a relative reference. So based on where you set it, uh, it's not going to calculate an exact BPM for the music. It's going to be a relative reference. It's close. So hopefully you saw that, that that BPM value did change. I'll hit play again. So it will bounce around depending on how clear the beat is. Some music is a little harder to calculate based on others. So if you have a very clear bass hit, your BPM is probably going to calculate better. This is all just an algorithm. Uh, this is a helping tool. It's not a perfect tool. All right, just keep that in mind. So now you want to trigger cues or um, yeah, cues uh, based on sound. That's what's available in the dot two you trigger cues based on sound. So I have a cue list here that I already built that you see that each cue runs through uh, the fixtures. If I actually view this cue list, you'll see one, two, three, four. So it moves them up and down. So this is a regular go button. Now, when you change the trigger of all of these, you have an option to do sound or BPM, all right? So if I choose sound and I hit go, all right, the cue list is sitting there, right? And What's happening right now, boom, boom, boom. All right, what this is saying is that every time it detects sound, it's gonna trigger the cue. So instead of you having to actually hit the go button, every time it hears noise, it will trigger the cue. You notice when I was saying boom, 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 it's triggering each cue. When I go silent, nothing happens. All right, the other thing is in this trigger time cell you can actually set a threshold. This is listening to all the loudness of all frequencies. And you can actually change this to listen to just the bass, the middles, or the high notes. And sound one through seven are a various range of frequencies. Um, sound one is the lower end, sound seven is the higher end, it's just various frequencies. You can play around with that based on the music that you're dealing with and how you want stuff to trigger. So if I play music, So you get the idea, it's close. It's not going to be perfect, but it's close. Just kind of keeps the lights moving for you while you're while you have audio in your setup. The other option that you see in there, so that's just sound. The other option is BPM. Now BPM is beats per minute, and it's based off of what's calculated here. So even if I stop talking, this is going to keep running at 64 beats per minute. This cue list. Well, like I said before, if you have audio and noise coming in, the BPM will be calculated based on the BPM. So 
So keep that in mind. So that's another option. You have two different trigger options. Uh, the other thing is that you don't have to set every cue to be sound. Maybe you leave this as a go. So what that does for you is that maybe the rest of these are, maybe it's, let's say this one is a go and the other ones are sound. So right now I'm sitting in a go cue, so let me hit go. So now it's going to stay on Q6 because Q1 is a go, so I have to hit go. Now Q2 and 3 ran each time it heard sound, but Q4 is not going to go because it's waiting for a go button. Now as I keep talking, it's going to run through the next cues. So if you're playing music, big hits, you can manually hit go and then big hits can run based on the sound and then you manually hit go again and then big hits run based on the sound. Same thing could, acute, could occur based on BPM, so at least getting the cue list started requires a go command but it will sit in the last and then it is based on when the chorus comes, you want the chorus to run based on the BPM. You have all this versatility. Um, this trigger time is actually a threshold for the beats per minute, so it's, some, it's an offset function. Um, the other one, so this is just running dimmers. The other one that uh, somebody might ask is, you know, how do I, how do I pan and tilt the lights based on um, sound? Well. This other cue list that I made is actually two cues. Okay. So we're gonna look at the fixture sheet. What is the first cue? Well, the first cue is tilt at 0.5. Second cue is tilt at 90 degrees. Okay, how might I associate this with sound? Well, if I change this cue list, I'm actually gonna uh, do this differently. I'm gonna look at the cues over here. And we'll view that and we'll go back to the fixture sheet so I can see these values. Um, if I set these both to BPM, it's just going to go back and forth based on the BPM value. So it's going to tilt back and forth. And the fade time is zero, so there's not much of a fade in there. I could put a one second fade. So that's basically on BPM. But I'll set those to zero so we can see what's going on. Now if I set this to sound, see each snap of my finger runs that back and forth. On the other hand, what if you have really slow music and you don't want it to just go, you want it, maybe you want it to tilt out each bass hit, but sit until the next bass hit. So this is where you're gonna do a timed follow. So what happens? Every time it hears sound, it triggers Q2, and it'll be in Q2 for one second, and then it'll auto follow back to Q1. So I'm gonna stop talking for a couple seconds, and you're gonna see that it's gonna sit in Q1, and then I'll snap my finger. So you see how that might work? You might have a really slow bass hit, and you only want it to tilt out. The longer you make, the longer you set this, you know, the longer it might sit in the tilt queue. And once again, you get the choices of sound. So that's basically the rundown of how audio input on dot two might work for you.